So, yes, of course, this is going to be um, part three. Now, I showed you at the end of the last lesson how we just made a diff difference to this uh, ear here. OK. And now we're going to continue and do more things to make it more uh, realistic for ourselves and, and make it more artistic. But I think the first place we want to start really is with this, um, you know, we've got the two lines down, which are our placement lines for the fabric. And then we've got this automatic um, applique box, which we made in brown. And then we did the two lines after it. So now I'm going to highlight that applique box okay and I'm going to come over here to edit objects just above digitize edit objects and I'm going to come down and say break apart okay so now you will see on our sequence board yeah we've got uh, that one stitch which is a placement line then we've got, I don't know what that is, I can't see what that is. We'll see what that is in a minute. Then we've got the second line in green, which is going to, uh, where it's going to sew down the fabric and we're going to cut it back to that margin. Then we've got another break. Then it's going to do a, a, a um, boxed zigzag to hold the edge of the fabric. And then we've got another gap, which we're going to get rid of these gaps in a minute. And then the last thing it's going to do is the outside frame, as you can see, the brown. OK, so let me just get rid of some of these gaps a moment. That one, I'm going to hit delete. We don't want that. That one, I'm going to hit delete. We don't want that. And that one, I'm going to hit delete. We don't want that. OK, so we're concentrating on these three things. And the reason why I've broken it apart, because I said to you, I want the brown stitches to be under this final um, applique satin stitch. So I've just broken apart the applique so that I can come down and pick up the two lines, which are these two lines here. And I can just, by holding on to one of them, bring it up above, you see, up above, that uh, a, a, a satin applique finish. Now you see on, on the drawing, okay, if I press B on my keyboard and bring it up nice and big, okay, now you can see here that the lines are now being sewn after the material's gone down, but before the final satin stitch. You with that? Okay. So uh, that's how we split apart a, um, a normal, what you would call an automatic, which here, here, automatic digitise and applique. Then we can split it apart and we can have something else in between the elements. All right. So that's what we did there. Now, the other thing, obviously, because the hooves are sewn uh, afterwards, they can stay where they are. They're, they're not a problem for us at the moment. The other thing I want to do is where we did the manual uh, applique, yes, which was uh, stitching down this uh, a placement line, and then we manually put a stitch down line, and then we manually put a um, tack down line, yeah, I'm going to take those three now because it's showing above my uh, applique, um, my final satin stitch. I'm going to take those now and move them upwards. And I want those to come in. Whoops, too far. Come down. Oh, we, we play games like this, me and this computer. Too far, too much, whatever. I want it to come in above, below the lines, but above. Or we could have it actually come in right above everything, yeah? So they go down first, then we do the applique, because otherwise we've got to keep changing um, threads, okay? So we just want grey, that's all grey, that's all going to be brown, 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 and then we start on the black. 
All right, so then if I click off what I had, as you can see now, that applique stitch has gone down for the fabric on its face and it can no longer be seen. It's hidden by now the sew out of the satin wood. Now the next thing I want to do is to get some of our colours together so that we're not having to continually change colour all the time. So we've got our hooves, which we're going to go and sort out straight away now. So I'm going to pick up one hoof, it's in the black, come to the fill quality that it is up here in the fill thing, and I've got it to Tami, which I think is quite nice, but... Uh, I think I might drop down the patterns of the tatami, yeah, and say I want it more hoof like. And I think this number five, yeah, is more hoof like, isn't it? So I just need to straighten that. I'm trying to think now, do I want to straighten that entirely? I will go and select it, but it is selected, so I'll hit reshape now. And you know, as you did, we, we've always got this reshape bar. Mm undo because that I didn't quite get hold of it okay if I get it nice and big can you see we've got this uh, bar I'll take it from this end yeah the angle bar and that changes the angles slightly yeah now that looks more like a hoof doesn't it so I've got it going flat across now to save us time if I go back if I say yes I like that and I select it again all right and I come down on my right click on my uh, mouse and come down to copy object properties from there yeah move over to the other one right click on the other black and say apply object properties and can you see it's now done exactly the same thing over there yeah with me so far let's go and hit save so now I've got a more shiny hoof. It's still to take me, but now it's to take me number five. And I haven't messed with any of the other settings that we could mess with. I've left it at that. That will do me. I think that's quite nice for a hoof. Okay. Now, the other thing is, uh, <coughs> while we're at it, the next thing I've got to deal with are the blacks for his face a moment. So I'm going to pick up that one and looking on my, well, I'm going to pick them all up because I've got one, two and three. I'm holding shift so it's not going to do it like that. So I've got to start at the top. Click off, click on, uh, hold and shift, pick up those three black bits, which is all his main, yeah? And I want them to go up now and come in after the hoof, the black hoof. So we're grouping our colours so that our machine won't continually be asking us to change colors so now i'm going to click off that and i'm going to say well this one i think on this one i'm going to do a satin all right and i'm going to go to the effects and i'm going to say i want it feathered see here feathered edge so side two, which is the right hand side, I'm going to say feather that, but I don't want it that rugged. I want that to sort of like come down. No, go up, come down. No, leave it where it was. There, low. But here, maximum width, I'm going to say no, 2.5 millimetres. That brings that in a little bit. Yeah. Good. Bring it in a bit more. I'm gonna say no two millimeters. Yeah, two millimeters. Then I'm gonna go back to fill and we are on satin now, aren't we? Yeah. And I'm gonna highlight it again. Well it's highlighted and reshape it with the angle because horses hair, I believe, really speaking. Yeah, it's like that. Well, now I seem to have lost 
I click off it again and select it and now I'm going to go back to my effects and say now I want it to be more now let's go back to 2.5 now let's make that even bigger and say 2 no say 3 oops say 3 yeah it's still not showing what I want it to show now so uh, reshape that again and I'm going to move that angle just so I get I don't want that going that way I want it that way there we are now there you see now I'm getting and again this is something you can do yourself but you just you want to just fiddle with it a little bit there and I'll say select so I'll come off it there so that gives it a bit of movement doesn't it okay and then this side i don't want to to muss with this i just want that now to be fill satin yeah and uh, a reshape and i want that to, i don't want it to be messed with that one so i just want it to come down okay i just want there we are the satin to come down so i'm going to say yeah that's fine that's great and then this top well we do want that sort of topsy-turvy don't we so i'm going to leave it on tatomi and i'm going to open up the tatomi pattern panel again and i'm thinking about it, right i want it to I, I want it to go left like a fringe over his head yeah so maybe this one maybe this one let's have a little look yeah, that's not so bad, is it? And if I go to reshape so I can see where my angles are and I can bring that even more. Yeah, even more down to where I think it should be. Back to select and off a bit. Okay, so what do you think of that? In the last uh, one, we did do these little ear bits. Okay, I think that's pretty good, actually. I'm liking that. So now... Uh, not only have we now decided where we wanted everything, we've now done the stitch development that I wanted to give me a nice outlook. Uh, I'm just trying to think there. Here, for some reason, I seem to have... I don't think it matters, but it just it's, it's looked a bit like a gap, but I, 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 I think that's just where his mane is falling. Okay, so... <clears throat> what's the next thing we want to do now we've done all that black uh, we need to get the white in now before we reintroduce the grey and the black and the pink so uh, let's now come down to what we know are our white bits which are the gums basically so uh, they're there no what I'm yeah, we've done, yeah, we've done the, pig, the gums. So those are the two gums, okay, the white teeth. And I want those to go up. Yeah, I want, yeah, I haven't picked them up, have I? I want to move those up to under, after the silver, after the black. So now they're after the black that we've just done. And then what do we want? Uh, so we've got that down. And while we're on white, let's go down and pick up the other white things that we've got, which are the eyes. One, whoops. One, shift. Three. Pick those up and move those up to being, not there, not there, before the silver, under the teeth. Okay. Yeah. So those so now we're stitching all the white in one go right although we haven't done anything i'm going to leave those teeth uh, angles exactly as they are but the eyes so now i'm just going to pick up the one on this side and i'm going to say reshape and do i want a satin i think i do and i'm going to bring it up really big now and say uh with my space angle bar I want them to be, yeah, a bit like that, okay? Then I'm going to click off it, I'm sorry, go and select it again. And you can do it here or here, 
and I'm going to come down and I say copy object properties, click on the next one and say apply object properties. Okay, there we are. Then the news, uh, that one, I want that one to be more, they were, they were sat in. So this one, I'm opening up the uh, our tatami box again, okay. And I'm not, I, I mean, there are so many other things we do, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as it is now, because this is quite a long project. So I'm going to say, what is this nose? What does the nose look like? Does it look like that? No, didn't know that. A nose could look like... Like it's a shape, a bit like fur. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to zoom out, because remember, we're at a huge... Uh, size hmm. a reshape shape the angle bar and say I want to come downwards down this face right let's uh, click off of that go to select so I can click off it and have a look and say you know what actually that's not so bad is it let me have a look closer in yeah, that's not too bad either. I'm going to leave the eyes. Certainly a lot needs to be done about those. I am going to now work on bringing in the silver. All right, so we may as well come down here and start with this lovely little hoof, yeah? And first off, without changing the stitch, just keeping it as a normal Tatomi number one stitch, I'm just going to say reshape Bring it up nice and big, pull that angle bar out and say, well, actually, first it should come down, shouldn't it? There. So I haven't changed the stitch, I just changed the angle. And again, uh, to save time, oops, I can say, mm, click off it, click off it. Oh, my machine's playing me up now. Select. Uh, copy object properties and come over here pick that one up and say apply object properties so that is the same then also while we're here let's come out a bit and look at uh, yeah, look at the shoe yeah so this is all one thing and we want it metallic Let's see what it looks like in satin. Yes, I think that looks better. And see what that looks like in satin. Yes, that looks better. And I just want to zoom in to make sure I'm covered on the stitches. All right. Is that covering it? Yes, it is. OK, so we're covered on the stitches. So I think that's pretty good now for his feet. Great. So, uh, we've got all those uh, silvers together. So now we want to go and work on uh, the next part of silver. No, we don't. What we want to go and work on now is the pink. Because if you remember, this is a dark grey now, not a silver. So we've done all the silver. So we're going to come down now and start working on the... That's his ear. So that's his ear, so that's great. That can all go in at the same time now. And then we want to start working. His ears are there. Uh, his ears. Yeah, his ears are there. Uh, his tongue, okay? And I don't. I want a tatomi, but I want a different type of tatomi. So I am looking at this and saying, well, if I was a horse's tongue, I think I'd look like that one, 39. Yeah, I think I would. And then I'm going to go in so I can see it much closer and say, well, do you know what? There's not a lot I want to do with that. And the other one I'm just going to leave as it is because it's too small to play with. But at the moment now I can see his tongue. It's, to me, that looks like a tongue. So that's fine. Then we want to work on the dark grey. I'm just going to pause this here a second. All right, so we're going to work with this dark grey. So over here, I'm picking up the dark grey. 
and this is it, it's snout isn't it really and I it's too big to do in satin so I'm going to look at coming down again opening up my uh, drawer <laughs> my little uh, drawer of nonsense and saying well I, what would I like that to be I think I'd like that to be a bit of a I'm going to go with 29. Yeah, no. Yes. No. Uh, well, maybe. If I select it, that's 29, wasn't it? And uh, reshape. And take that angle bar to say, well, do you know what? A nose really ought to flip and come down, didn't it? You know. Ah, now I've got it coming down. Now I'm not too happy with that one. Now I might go back up and say, well, no. Try a few. Try a few. Try a few at that angle. Mm. No, not giving it me, is it? Well, that one. No, good God, no. No, good God, no. What's it? What are you trying to do to me, chat? Um... I don't want it just that weave. Bit cock eyes, isn't it, if I do it like that? But if I change that angle now, yeah, now I'm straightening it. Can you see? I'm sort of straightening it a little bit. Okay. Select and come off. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. And it's not going the same way as those angles and that angle and that angle, is it? No. Okay, so I've come off of that now. And basically, I could say to it, no, I want it, I'm going to do it myself. So, what was that one? That one is number nine, right? So then, if I pick up the second one and say, well, let's have that as number nine as well. Okay, number nine, yeah? And then we'll go uh, reshape on that one. Let's bring it in nice and big so I can see it. Where are you? Reshape. Yeah, I did actually want that angle to go, yeah. More or less across, don't I? Yeah, I did want that. Right, so uh, if I go back to select and come off of it, and wheedle myself out. Yeah, that's the only, is that still, no, that one, no, that one is on, should be on that light grey, shouldn't it? Yeah, it is, right, okay. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm looking at now to do, what is this target to do, is there? It's just put all the blacks together. So we've done all the blacks for his mane, then we start, let's go up on our sequence bar. Those are all whites for his nose. Then we did the light grey for all the other parts of the horse. Then we did the ears, the tongue and the gum. And then we started working with the grey. So let's take the grey, that grey and that grey. Sorry that they're all good colours to see on the screen. And put them below the gums. See if that's still working for us. Yes, it is. Okay. And then we've got black, 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 his teeth. Yeah. And uh, these are black, his nose. Eyes are going to be brown. So if, so if I take those eyes and move the hazel eyes up and drop them below that grey. All right. Yeah, then all our blacks, including our circles around the eye and anything else we've done on the eye, yeah, are all in black. So now, not only have we got our little boy finished quite nicely, I think he looks all right. Um, yeah, so I'm coming out now to whatever and I'm going to hit D 
yeah? So away goes all the other colour, yeah? He's looking pretty good, isn't he? I think. Now, uh, what I want to do, just so that I know it's right, is I'll go now, right click, uh, background display colours, and the solid colour, and I'm going to say be blue, because there's nothing blue on it. Say OK, right? Then look at it and say, well, can I see blue anywhere on my stitch out between colours or anything else that is going to cause, you know, going to leave a gap with my fabric aside from there which is going to be fabric anyway right that that, that blue is all going to be horsey fabric isn't it the only thing is that nose bit isn't it but then that is going to be gray under there as well who cares so that's all right yep so everything's looking good so right click and i'll put my uh <sighs> come out of there i need to be off the work area come off of there and say uh I don't want to be on anything. Select background. Oh, I've got it up here and all. So let me just put that back to the usual grey that I work with and go OK. All right. So that just helps me. If I can see through the uh, stitching, then I know it's going to be difficult. Um, I can't think of anything for a moment. What else we need to do? I, I, I got to be a bit careful of the time and I don't know whether I want to continue now on this one or make another video for the last part. Well, let's see how far we get and see what happens. So before we start doing the wording, what I want to do now is you can see I, I've hit D, which is still there in my picture, but it's hidden, okay? Uh, and everything else we have, I think, put in the right order. So... To test that scenario, up here, on your marvellous um, hatch digitizer or Janome version 5.5, okay, you have a player. Now, what will happen is, first off, I play it through to make sure there's no alarming mistakes, okay, and we'll watch it. Uh, I will make it go faster than it is because it's yeah it go faster than that loves right oh Christ too fast now one minute slow down slow down slow down pause whoa so what just happened what happened was we did one line went round so we knew where to put our square of batting and our square of fabric that this is going to sit on okay your background itself fabric uh to sit on so it, it, right and then we leave that for a moment now and it, you'll have you know your odd ends uh, hopefully you've got a bit of a, a material sticking over the edges because this work will draw the material towards the middle and so we don't want to cut the fabric until we're ready okay so then it, it very quickly because i had it going too fast it did the next thing it did was the outline of the horse's face yeah we put a piece of fabric down it stitched it with the blue to hold it down yeah i mean obviously you're not going to use blue but it's a machine stop yeah stitched it down uh with a tack with a, an ordinary running stitch then it's done a very small zigzag to hold the fabric edges okay so between the first running stitch says well, that's where you're going to stick your fabric and the second running stitch says well right now i pinned it down yeah and then you get your um, applique zitters out and you cut it back to with one or two millimetres of that line that you've just sewn. Then this is where the zigzag comes in then cause it, to, to cover all your little edges a little bit. But remember, we've got more going on that's going to cover these edges too. OK, then it drew, as I wanted it to, the... Uh, 
where are we now? So we're there. So it, then it drew the one box to say, well, this is where your wood fabric's going to go. Then it did another second one to say, well, yeah, okay. And this is uh, tacking down that wood fabric. And we then cut it to size in the hoop within one or two millimetres of that um, line. Then the third line, the zigzag, is to really hold it down. Okay. Now I'll start it. I'll get it going again now. Play. I'm hoping that the next thing after it's done that is it's going to put, we're going to put our brown fence bar lines in. And now you can see it's starting to do the box underlay for the satin stitch that's going to go over the top. And there goes the satin stitch. All right. Okay. Okay, what's it going to do after that? So we're down to there now. So after this, so now we've got a lovely piece of fabric looking like wood planks there. And we've got a horse's body in grey, face in grey. So now it's going to do what we asked it to do, which was the black. Okay, that's going down. Then, while well, we've got the black under, it's going to do the horse's mane. Okay, that's all good. See that? Lovely. Then it's going to do the white we asked it to do for the teeth. Come down, come down, it's going fast. Then it's going to do the eyes and the nose. Come fast, yep. Yeah. And now we've changed to grey and we're doing... Uh, yeah, the horse's feet. Yeah. And now we're doing a bit of ears. Oh, and now we've gone on already. We've done the ears and we've done, now it's going fast, isn't it? Now we're doing the grey for the nose. Blink, 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 blink. Now we're doing the grey for the bottom jaw. We should go back. Yeah, we're putting in the hazel eyes, putting in the black bits now we wanted, putting in his nostrils. Then we put in a few lines for the tongue. We've done all that bit. What was it? Round the eyes. It's done. Okay, so that did actually go down in sequence. It didn't cause a problem, did it? And that is exactly how I expected it to work. So now I can come off that. Or just go stop, get rid of it, whatever, right? So that player. So I always play my things out to make sure there isn't a glaring mistake and it's, it is doing what I thought it would do. So the next thing we need to do is the wording. Okay, so let's get this wording in while I, while I remember the phrase. Just a moment. Uh, lettering and monogramming appear on the left-hand side. Click that. Lettering we want, okay, and we want to go over here and write the words that we want. So for the moment, I'm just going to type it in the text box up here. If you didn't. Yeah, it from the horse's mouth, comma, uh, comma, okay, I, I like, and I'm going to hit enter, then stop. Okay, so I'm clicking on that now. Uh, I said I've got too many words in there. I'm taking out the then. Okay, and I'm going to take out that space before the F. Okay, uh, and I'm going to take out that space before the A. Right, if you didn't hear it from the horse's mouth, stop listening to the answer. Told you. Right, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, uh, but naturally that's far too big and everything else. And while we're just sort of like on now looking at digitizing words okay that's block two so while it's highlighted and you can see on my um object uh thing down here it's highlighted i can drop down our font pieces before i do this actually i'm going to go and save that i haven't saved it for a while have i no right so uh right then i'm going to click here and sorry Click on the wordings, okay, and I'm going to drop down, and you see how this now 
uh, brings up every uh, sort of uh, well, it brings up every font you've got on your machine. So a lot of these you'll have, which will have come with um, Hatch, okay. And then there's a few that haven't, and they are things that I've bought and brought in. But what I want to do, I want to show you the premise of this, okay. The last thing I use is backlight. So if I click on that one, look how that changes. That's quite nice, actually. You might come back to that. But anyway, uh, I'm going to bring down the back, uh, bring down this again. And I'm just leaving my mouse over, well, I say, two colour coral shadow, uh, two colour aerial shadow, yeah. And now on my keyboard, I am just going to click down my recent list or whatever it is, yeah. And as I'm doing it, Auntie Bruce. As I'm doing it, you can see that it's changing the appearance of uh, my stitching on the project, okay? Uh, so, I don't want any of this. It's, it's now gone back up. Come down, you little so-and-so. Not happening, is it, for me? Oh, here it is. Right, avant-garde. No, 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 no. So I'm looking for one that I know is going to come out. Right, that's block one. That's block two. It's a bit fatter. Block two also. Book script. Bethany. What that? Carla. No. Casual Sharif. That's quite nice. That's quite nice, actually. Cayman. No. Oh, what's that one? Chancery. Shakutili. Uh, Tottenham Trail. Yeah, you know, I so this is how I play now, and you don't want to see me doing all this, yeah. But uh, <laughs> some are going to work. Oh, quite like that one, Ewardian script. And as you can see, every one that you're doing is smaller or larger as you go down. As felt tip. Mm. Oh, I like that flare script. I do quite like that. because it's a smaller one, but look how lovely that that is set out. Okay, so that was called Flare Script. So it's a script. Now, uh, to, to get it in this sort of second half that we want it in, I can either make it smaller or I can split it up. Again, so if I go in front of the H and hit Enter, yeah, and then come back in front of the it and add and delete. So I'm and then spacebar. You see what I'm doing in lettering, yeah? From the I don't want it to be that wide. So here it from yeah the enter yeah from the horse's mouth comma and I can take out I can delete that space there from the horse's mouth yeah and these are quite good. After listening, I can put in a uh, a return. <laughs> listening, and then take uh, after the delete a return, and then put the space back in. Now I think the asset told you I want all in one go, right? So I'm gonna go back. Well, let's leave it where it was and hit enter again. All right. Now I'm moving this over. Moving it down, moving it over, moving it up, moving it over. The to the uh, stop listening to the as it told you. Yeah, okay, right, okay. Now I I I am gonna. Uh, I've clipped off everything at the moment. So I want to go right back to the top of our work and say. Uh, hide. I just press uh, D. Disappear. Whatever that is. Okay. Uh, and say, well, do you know what? I'm going to do this in two bits. I'm going to say, 
uh, click on it then you open the horse's mouth right and then I'm going to go and delete the next bit I'm going to just delete that now so I do it in two parts and backspace so I haven't got a gap right so you see now I got this one if you didn't hear it from the horse's mouth yeah if you didn't hear it from the horse's mouth so I want it to be big enough for people to read, right? So that's one bit. My, and I'm going to go ahead and hit lettering again. So we're starting a, a, a new paragraph, if you like, or a new set of wordings. Was uh, Stop listening. It was just stop. Oops. Stop. Stop listening. Yeah. Stop listening. Yeah. Mm, I'm going to stop that there Stop listening Because I want it to sit on You see And that, uh, that one What was this? That was uh, What's that one? Flare script This one I want that to be flare script too Bring that down uh, Flare script Stop listening. And then I'm going to go letter in so I can continue with another bit, right? Oh, hang on, let me get to select because that is too close to there. Yeah. Uh uh. Uh uh uh. Or oh, over, over, over. This is why I'm doing it in. Uh, not all in one paragraph. Stop listening. Right, and then I can click off on that. Over here on text. To the. Right. And again, that I want in a uh, flare script. Right. To the. Another bit of script. Capital A, ass. Who told you? Full stop, right? I got it now. And then that I want, not that, in that, because it's still highlighted. Not backlight, drop it down. And one too frequently used to bit top now, flare script. Right, okay, to the ass, uh, stop listening, to the right ass. Uh, yeah, that can come. So I've got roof now. So now I can start to uh there now can you see uh oh, it's not the same there as it is there yeah and what we can do there is height is that baseline oh is that um I don't want no, I don't want that. I could bring that up a bit. I gotta be careful, right? To the Stop listening. I've got to remember what we're doing on this side as well, mind. Stop listening. If you didn't hear it from the horse's mouth, stop listening to the artist's audio. Right. Got it. I'm happy with that. It didn't have to be that colour. I just done it in black, haven't I? So I can now um, select all three. Shift. I don't know what colour I'm going to zoom in. To the horse's mouth. Right. <coughs> to the ass. Ooh, oh, I, I missed something there. A minute. Where's me, where's me wobble you? There? No, I, somehow I haven't got what I wanted. To. There? I got a hoe, not a who. So the hoe, actually that would work, wouldn't it? So the hoe told you. <laughs> to be naughty, Jack. <coughs> to, <coughs> to the ass who told you, yeah? And I do want to bring that down. Would it matter if I did it like that? No, I think that's okay. 
there. I think that's okay. Righty ho. Now, so that's all there. And I was going to say, right, let's go down until um, I realise my uh, bad mistake there. Pick it all up and say, well, I, I don't know if I want that in uh, black. I don't think I do because I've got black and all that. I think I'd like that in a nice bold, nice bold lipstick. Lipstick. Well, they're both the same. It's really red they seem to have. But I might do it in a nice red. Okay. Don't know. I haven't decided yet what fabric I'm going to be putting down underneath this guy. All right. So I don't know if I want it red, black, or in, you know, individuals or whatever. There are a lot more we can do about the kerning. We can do things about, um, breaking it apart to make it easier da, 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 da. but i am not going to do that on this uh video i will do it on another video to make it clearer to you and uh, we've gone on for ages now haven't we so righty ho so the last thing that we want to do so we've got everything down now that we sort of wanted all right uh, i've got a full stop after there uh so i could go to uh let me not work letter in and I'm put a full stop in which I could do that's mm. that was a comma anyway and do that put a full stop in what's that look like yeah okay and it is close enough so there's no there's no I'm not going to be a, a, a horrendous sort of like jump to it right okay so what else do i want to do i could move that but i don't want to to be honest i don't really want to because it's gonna detract from that and that i could move but i don't want to I, i'm not going to get too involved i'm not going to get too involved with this one okay so now we're, we're talking about everything we've already done so now whip up right to the top uh, we can unlock that uh, picture then we can right click on it and uh, delete it where is it where is it seems to delete it that picture delete it's not doing it I don't know why it's not doing it oh because it got hidden bring it back up now I can right click and say delete it. We finished with that artwork. All right. So now in our sequence bar, we've got the two lines, haven't we? All right. But we need to make another couple of lines. So I have highlighted the first top one, gone over to duplicate, which will have sent one to the bottom. So, and I'm going to do that again. Oh, I'll go to the bottom now because I don't see it, right? So I've, I've done another one. Now, why have I done another one? Because after we finish doing all the wordings, then we want to put uh, the background fabric on our mug rug, yeah? So, after you finish all the wording, you're going to take the, the hoop off your arm and you're going to lay down your backing fabric yeah then this stitch is going to stitch again right over the top you're going to take your hoop off your arm and you're going to cut back to that stitch on the back end and then we're going to turn it over and what we haven't cut yet is to that stitch line on the front all right so then we've got the back cut and the front cut yeah and the next thing that's going to happen is and we'll do it in a different color so we'll just duplicate that again all right and we'll call that oh i don't know purple right and we'll change that that one no i'm not going to do it that way delete that for a moment uh, yeah, that one. Uh, delete that one. Don't want that one. So we've got the back one. And then I want to do the satin stitch now. So I am going to come over to digitise. And, and I'll tell you why I'm doing this. 
and I am going to put it, take it off a true view, right? So now it's I, all I can see are my stitch lines, yeah. And I'm going to use a um, digitize an open shape, all right. At the moment, in a single run, yeah. And I'm going to make this as big as I can. And where do I want to stop and start? I think I'm going to stop and start down here. Right, now I've got to be careful. Right, because what I want to do is start there. And then I'm starting to curve. All right. And I'm going to do this. Back, back, back. See it went wrong? I'm going to do this as another... run line bigger out itself I'm manually drawing this for a reason. But when I concentrate enough, I'll tell you. Right. The reason why I'm doing this because this is going to be sat in. And you see how it started there? Yeah. Now, I want it to overlap. So I want it to overlap two dots. Right, and hit enter. All right. Then I'm going to go pick it up, which happens to be white, and say, oh, no, 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 what colour is it going on the outside? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm going to use... Oh, I'll just say blue for now. It doesn't matter, does it? Right? Then I'll put my true view back on. All right. So now i got a blue. Come back out. So now I've got a blue where I've overlapped it down here and i got the blue over there and I'm going to say, do you know what I want? I want a satin stitch, right? So now, can you see, i turned that blue into a satin stitch. But I want that blue, while well, it's still highlighted, right, to be uh, four millimetres. Four. Look how sick that is now, huh? Yeah? four millimetres thick for our edge mm -hmm. then I'm going to duplicate that one and I got two and call that uh, orange if you like so you can see it and say no I want that to be a motif stitch picking up motif I don't want that really, so I just want a crosshair. I ain't got a cross stitch on here, have I? Blanket, no, it's that in zigzag. So now, oof, hello. If I pick this up, if I open that up nice and big, yeah, uh, and come down, and I'm I'm in my um, motif line work, yeah. And I want something that is going to hold. I really just want a cross. Ah, when I cross. oh, there it is. So see that cross, yeah? I'm going to make it that. All right. So that's the motif now. So if we come back to the major uh, thing, uh, no, right? But you see, it's not big enough, is it? So I don't know. What? Oh, because of the... What's it? Right, okay. So I need to make that one, if you like. Uh, picking it up. Go right to the bottom. Picking it up. It's in orange. Picking it up. And saying, uh, I want that to be... No, I don't want it to be five. I wanted it to be uh, 3.5. 3.5. Oh, I'll click on that, yeah. Now I'll take the corner point and bring it out. That's what I wanted to do. 
Yeah, that's okay. And then again with this one. There. Can you see that I'm bringing it on top of? Yeah, there's a double one there. That's great. And I think there's a titchy bit there. I could say come down a titch there. And let's go at the top and say, yeah, you go up a titch there. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Hang on. That's okay. And that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. So you see how I've manipulated that cross stitch now, which is like tacking down the, um, you know, it's something you're going to put in the washing machine, as I do with mine quite often. Then you want something that's actually going to hold that satin stitch together. So that's our last stitch. Okay. So let's review it from where we started uh, today. Well, we put everything in the right order sequence and we changed everything that we wanted to be stitch-wise. We added a ditty, yeah? And you saw how I did that. That's fine. Then we copied the original size of the exterior as a simple run line because having finished the embroidery work on the front, we took it off the hoop we set a taped uh, material on the back of the hoop. Then we put the hoop back under and we stitched this black stitch line. Then we took the hoop off and we cut the back of the hoop fabric to one, one or two millimetres to that line. Then we cut the fabric on the front to one or two millimetres of the line, yeah? I'm going to put it back under now, yeah? Then we put in, and we do whatever colour we want as a satin stitch, and then it will continue on and do whatever colour you want as the holding stitch, all right? Now, the whole thing, the stabiliser that we're going to put under this, obviously this wash-away stabiliser, so that we can literally brush it when we take it out the hoop, we can brush the outside edge with warm water and get rid of the um, washable stabiliser. And I use um, something called Obigon. Okay, uh, it's like it looks like fabric, very sort of like uh, not dense fabric and um, open weave fabric, but it is a washable stabiliser. All right, and that should be that now in i will do another video because i will show you me stitching this out okay as the last sort of thing i hope you've enjoyed this one it's been a bit longer hasn't it but i hope you've enjoyed this one as well so one more video to come and then we're well this is done but then you'll see it done okay and in this yeah, and please watch the last one because when i've got it under the needle that's when you really see if things aren't working for you and I'll show you what changes to make. I really hope you subscribe to this channel on YouTube and also um, come and join us on uh, Love Rock Designs Embroidery Group as well because then you can see everybody else's makes as well. We are a small group as we start but obviously we're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger so get in now at the beginning. Thank you for watching.